Hi, this lesson is about shifting graphs. We have vertical and horizontal shifts. Let's talk about vertical shifts first. When you add a constant that we're going to k call k uh, to a function, uh, when you add the constant to the function, like you do here, that shifts the graph um, up k units. And when you subtract k, uh, from a function that's going to shift it down k units. Um, with horizontal shifts, um, that means that you're going to be adding k or subtracting k from the variable itself. So that looks different. So if I have f of x plus k, then that means you're going to shift uh, the function k units to the left. And when you subtract k from x like you do here, uh, that means you're going to shift f of x k units to the right. All right, so let's look at some examples so that you can see the difference because the notation is similar, but it's actually different. So with vertical shifts, you're adding or subtracting k from the actual function. And with horizontal shifts, you're adding or subtracting k from the actual variable. Um, so uh, here are some examples below. So we want to state the function that shifts y equals x squared three units upward and then identify uh, the vertex of that shifted function because x squared is a parabola. So um, if we want to shift up, that means that you have to add three, like in this uh, notation. So adding three to x squared is x squared plus three. And if that shifts your vertex upward, uh, remember this is the original function y equals x squared with a vertex at zero, zero. Um, and when you shift it up, you're gonna have a vertex at zero, three. Okay, so let's look at another example. Um, so here, in the example below, suppose we take the original function y equals x squared, which is again a parabola, and we want to shift it three units to the right. So to the right um, would be uh, this right here, that notation. So that means I have to subtract three from the value of x. Uh, so it has to be done before you, you do the function, which is squaring it. So that's x minus three squared. So again, this is my original function with a vertex at zero, zero. And when I shift it, three units to the right, I'm going to have a vertex at three, zero. Okay, so that's just a quicker way of finding the parabola the vertex instead of using negative b over 2a. When you're doing shifting, you just have to shift the original vertex of zero, zero in the appropriate direction. Okay, so what type of shift would occur to the graph of the parabola y equals x squared? in the graph of, and I'm missing a y here, y equals x plus one squared minus four. So this is shifting it both horizontally and vertically. This is the horizontal shift, and this is the vertical shift. So um, since I'm adding one to the x value, so adding shifts to the left, and then I'm subtracting four, from the function, so that would be this one, so that means I'm gonna go down four units. So I am shifting uh, one unit left, one unit left and four units down, which means I have a vertex at negative one, negative four, which is exactly what you see here, negative one, negative four. Okay, so let's move on. Um, to the next one, Here, this is y. All right, so what type of shift would occur to the graph of y equal to the square root of x in the graph of x square root of x minus two? So, and then state the domain. So here, if I am subtracting two from x, that means I'm gonna shift two units to the right. Remember when you're adding, to x, you're going left. When you're adding, when you're subtracting from x, you're going to the right. So it's kind of the opposite of what you would think. Um, so remember, the parent function uh, looks like this. 
this is your parent function at uh, starting at 0, 0, but when you shift it to the right two units, you're starting at 2, 0. So that means that your domain is from 2 to infinity. The parent function has a domain of uh, 0 to infinity. So you can look back at that section. Um, so what type of shift would occur to the graph of the, um, and this isn't a parabola, this is the absolute value function of y equals a root, uh, absolute value of x to the graph of y equals absolute value of x plus 3 plus 2. So um, that means that you're going to shift left three units and up two units. So anything that's affecting the x directly is going to go left to right. When you're adding, you go left. When you're subtracting, you go right. And anything that's affecting the outside part of the uh, function, so in this case, the absolute value, that's going to affect it up or down. So if you're adding, you go up. And if you go, uh, if you're subtracting, you go down. Um, so that's exactly what you see here. Um, so the original parent function looks like this. It looks like a V with uh, the corner at 0, 0. So when I'm shifting it left and up, that means that my new corner is at negative 3, positive 2. Okay, so if I asked for the domain of uh, this function, uh, your domain is still all real numbers. X could be anything, but your range starts at 2 and goes to infinity. All right, so state the function that would shift y equals x cubed one unit to the left. So one unit left, remember left or right affects the x, and when you're going left, you add. So your new function is x plus 1 cubed, um, and then the domain uh, but it's still all real numbers. The shifting does not change the domain. X could be positive, negative, zero. X could be anything in this function, a fraction, a decimal, and you can compute your value of Y. Okay, so state the function that would shift one over X, two units to the right and three units uh, down. So remember, left and right is affecting the, the x value. And if I'm going to the right, that means I have to subtract 2 from x. And up and down is outside of what the function is doing. In this case, the recipro reciprocal function with the x in the denominator 1. Um, so down 3 units would mean that you subtract 3 from the function itself. So we have 1 over x minus 2 and then minus 3 outside of the function. So in this case, your domain is all real numbers except 2, because when x is 2, it would be undefined. So with interval notation, you would say from negative infinity to 2, union from 2 to infinity. OK. So reflections. A reflection means that the graph is being reflected either over the y-axis or over the x-axis. When you have a negative in front of the function, the way you do here, that's going to reflect it across the x-axis. So in other words, it's going to make it flip downward. And when you have a negative in front of the x value, like you do here, that's going to make it reflect across the y-axis. So it's going to flip it a left or right. OK, so let's look at two examples. I have f of x equal to x squared, which I've graphed here in purple. And then I have g of x equal to negative x squared, which I've graphed here in orange. So that is a reflection across the x-axis because the negative is in front of the function. So negative x squared. Um, so let's move on to another example. Suppose I have f of x. Oops, I have f of x here in this uh, hot pink color, which is oh, square root of x. And I have g of x in this 
uh, blue color, um, which is the square root of negative x. So the x is being affected, like I stated here. So this is a reflection across the y-axis. The hot one is on the right, f of x equal to the square root of x, and the blue one is on the left, so g of x equal to uh, the square root of negative x. So that flips it, um, it flips f of x over the y-axis. So what is the domain of f of x? The domain of f of x, if you recall, is, um, is from zero to infinity, um, because anything less than zero would result in a negative number in here, and we don't want negatives, that's imaginary. Uh, but the domain of g of x, well, you can put negative numbers in g of x, because when you take the negative of a negative, that makes it positive. So this one goes from negative infinity to zero, um, and includes zero, because square root of zero is just zero. So uh, your domain and range is uh, the opposite in terms of, of your signs. Um, okay, what is symmetry? Symmetry, uh, if a function is symmetric, it means it is a reflection of the function on either uh, the y-axis or on the origin. So we have two types of symmetry that we're going to discuss. That is even symmetry and odd. Um, a function is considered to be even if it is symmetric about the y-axis, and a function is even if this definition is true. If f of x equals f of negative x for all x is in the domain. And a function is considered to be odd if it is symmetric about the origin, and we can um, figure out if something is odd if f of negative x equals negative f of x. So again, that's a definition for all values of x in the domain. So let's do a couple of examples. We want to show that f of x equal to 1 minus x to the fourth is even. Notice that the graph is here. This is 1 minus x to the fourth. Um, and that is definitely even or symmetric about the y-axis because if you look at the left and the right side of this function, they are mirror images of each other. Okay, but this is how we show it algebraically. We're going to use this definition. Is f of x equal to f of negative x? So here's the f of x part on the left. Here's the f of negative x part on the right. So you just replace the x with negative x. But when you simplify negative x to the fourth power, that's just uh, the same as x to the fourth. So the left side equals the right side, and that's how you can check that it is um, even or symmetric about the y-axis. Um, so oftentimes a function is even if the exponent is an even exponent, but that's not always the case. Not all even functions have, um, not all uh, even functions have uh, an exponent that is even, uh, you could have exceptions to that rule. Uh, and then let's show that g of x equal to x to the fifth plus x is odd, meaning symmetric about the origin. And so you can see the graph is right here. This is x to the fifth plus x. So even about, I mean, odd or symmetric about the origin would mean that if I were to flip the function across each other or um, here from quadrant one to quadrant three, the function would actually lie right on top of each other. Um, so that's the case here. And the way you prove that is by using the definition. And the definition is the one that we saw up here, f of negative x equals negative f of x. So here's the g of negative x part, and here's the negative g of x part. So when you simplify negative x to the fifth power, well, negative one to the fifth gives me a negative x to the fifth power, and plus a negative x gives me a minus x, and when I distribute negative, um, negative, uh, the negative in front of g of x, I get negative x to the fifth minus x. So since the two sides 
are equal to each other, um, then you can say that it is odd. All right, or in other words, symmetric about the origin. Not all, fa not all functions have symmetry. Um, so in the next example shows you how not all functions are symmetric. So here we want to determine if h of x is equal to 3x to x cubed plus 4x squared has even or odd symmetry or if it is not symmetric. Um, so first we check for even. So that means replace the negative x um, in your function, which is on the right side. When you simplify that, you get the right side is the original function, 3x, uh, the left side is 3x cubed plus 4x squared. And your right side, when you simplify it, works out to be negative 3x cubed plus 4x squared. So the left side is not equal to the right side, so it is definitely not even. Then we're going to check for odd. Um, so we're going to actually take the original function. We want to check, we're going to do this in a slightly different way. We're going to check if um, h of x is equal to negative h of negative x, just to save some work. Um, so the, neg the h of negative x we just did, that's all this work in here, but then we got to take the opposite sign here. Um, so the work we just did in the last example is negative 3x cubed plus 4x squared. And when you distribute the negative on the outside, I get 3x cubed minus 4x squared on the right, which is not the same as the original function, which is 3x cubed plus 4x squared on the left. Since they are not equal, um, you can say that h of x is not odd and therefore um, it is not symmetric uh, about the y-axis or about the origin and therefore not symmetric here. So this is the graph of h of x um, and you can see that if I were to fold it over the y-axis, they would not lie on top of each other. And if I were to fold it over the origin, uh, quadrant one into quadrant three, or quadrant two into quadrant four, in other words, diagonal to each other, they would also not uh, lie on top of each other. So uh, you could see graphically that it is not uh, symmetric uh, there as well. All right, so that's it for this lesson. Try the homework. Good luck.